in this video we're going to focus on how we can draw these lines and then once we click on it we're going to redraw them with a different chart and basically we're using this with a plugin where the plugin makes the drawing of it and we want to make sure that it updates once we have these changes here so let's start to look how we can do this so let's start to look how to redraw lines based on data sets in a plugin in chart.js all right so first of all what we need is we need to have our default code which you can find in chartjs3.com getting started and you can find this link as well in the description box once you're on here just copy this boiler template copy this if you want to understand what this boiler template does make sure you watch this video here then i'm going to paste this in here i will cut this out i will paste the title in here then i will increase the size of this to 80 percent save refresh there we are let's convert this into a line chart so I'm going to go down here, say line, save, refresh. So now we have this. What I want to do here is maybe we say remove this. We're going to say attention equals um, column 0 0.4, save, refresh. All right, so we have this one here. What I want to do is I want to duplicate the data set. I'm going to copy this data set. I'm going to put it here outside. So I want to just say a constant data set one equals this object here so let's put these proper indentation here all right then i'm going to paste all of this here and i realize that we have one of this too much remove that one here and then put this indentation nicely here all right so we have all of this here i'm going to put a semicolon here and then let's duplicate this and i'm going to give this the name data set number two is read number two and let's call this based on this one was numbers others is cards and what i want to do here is i'm going to put a comma here and i'm going to put in here basically the lines of the levels and there was a specific item so i'm going to say here and i'm going to make this an array so this is allowed to do because we are basically working with javascript and in javascript we can create a new array within our object so that's no problem as well so i'm going to say here number five number 10 and number 15. so once we have this i put another co a comma here and you can put in here some custom color so i'm going to say yeah, uh, let's call this our uh, border color so border or level borders all right so that will be basically the color that the line would have so then what i'm going to do here i will just get the red one for first comma and then we already have a comma here then i want to have the yellow one that's the third item here and finally we're going to get the green one that's the fourth item here put that in there so once we have this i guess we can duplicate this now officially or i already duplicated it so let's grab this as well put it down here put a comma paste that in there and delete all those the uh, excess of indentation and then for here right now because we have different lines i want to give it a different color so it's easy to spot the differences of what i did so I get this uh, maybe this yellow one here put that in there and we're going to get this blue one color here put it in here all right so now what i want to do is i want to remove all of this this data set here and this data set will be referenced by whatever the data set is here above or at least the value of it i'll just call data set number one an array if i save this refresh you can see here nothing truly happens it's just all the same and uh, maybe what we could do is just remove these background color and the lines here just for the sake of it this one will just make it dark as well so we have different colors save there we are all right so what I want to do now is I want to have two buttons and this is very important. So we're going to say here button number one and this ID will be cards. And this will be the card item showing the card statistics and this will be the numbers. And this will be the number statistics or at least the numbers of how many numbers you're able to uh, remember I guess in this case. So once we have this what I want to do here now is I want to trigger this. So I'm going to just grab all of those, put it here down. I'm going to create here a simple function. 
So your um, constant no, cart equals document dot get element by ID cart. Then have another one constant numbers and document dot get element by ID numbers. And what we want to do here is basically an add event listener or create a function. So we say add event listener here, add event listener. Then trigger on click, when we click the button, then we have here the event, although we probably don't have to register this event, doesn't matter really, we don't need it. But what I do need is the function. So what I'm going to do here for the function, I'll just say here, change chart. So we have your two parameters eventually, and uh, because this is the cards, so that's basically the card items. What I want to do here is the, as the first parameter. First of all, I want to say here my chart. Basically, I'm getting this uh, chart object here. That will be important. And next one is number one, or at least a distinguished item. Later on, we have the other one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, put it in here. Just say here numbers, and numbers will be number two. So we can make an if statement, see which one we're clicking on. Quite simple. So once we have this save, we can now create the function. So we're going to say here, function, change chart. Then here, I'm going to say chart. So this chart is basically the reference to this my chart object, which is basically everything here. Next one, I'm going to say here the uh, value or number or something like that, or type, I don't know. You can just give it whatever you want. Doesn't matter so much. And then what we want to do here is basically the following. We're going to say your chart. And if you're wondering why chart, because of this, this is the reference of that one. And then we go here to chart, to config, and uh, uh, basically what we want to do then is go to data, to chart config dot data dot data sets. And this data set here, we will change this data set will be equal to the, uh, depending on what we're clicking on basically, but we can say your data set one. And the dataset one, if you're wondering again, that is this here. So that's when we click on a specific item. Which one we click? Well, basically we have two. And this will be number two. I mean, just make an if statement. So if, and then we can say here, quite simple, if the type equals strict number one, in that case, I'm going to say dataset number one. And it could be maybe, maybe the type could be card. That would be maybe a bit more logical. And then we can do another if statement. You can say also an else, but apparently using if statements would be more better than if else, because the more, it, it might be more complicated in the long run. So once we did that, then I'm going to say a chart dot update. And of course, update the item, save this, refresh, and look at this. We should see here. Oh, interesting. Doesn't work. Numbers. Of course, my bad. Make sure we have this. Save, refresh. Try again. There we are. All right, the numbers are the same. Basically, you can see here the change. It changes color, it changes the legend. But let's give it some uh, nice numbering here. Six. This should be eighteen, maybe. And then here, twenty-four and thirty. All right. Save, refresh. There we are. First part done, this all works. So the function recognizes it. And then we're going to use your plugin. So constant plugins object. And then we can say your levels. We want to make these lines. So we're going to constant. And then we say your constant levels equals ID levels. And basically, by the way, this is just a quick note. We could use this structure as well. I'll probably make a separate video for that because there are two ways really to do this. So then, what we want to do is we want to have these lines here and these lines will be based on uh, we want to draw the lines before we draw the data set so we say here before data sets draw then here say chart arcs and the plugin options all right then here object destruction if you don't know object destruction please check out my video in the description box on a setting chart GS with object destructuring. So we have like that. That will explain all what I'm doing here. But then here what we can do is certain values we need is CTX. We probably need the data. We probably need the chart area. And the chart area probably need left and right. But let's say top, bottom, left, right, width, 
and height. And then we have here the scales and the scales will be X and Y. So we have these options here. So now we can start to draw. We're going to ctx.save. And this save here will save the values all above or save all everything that we have. And then what we want to do is we want to start drawing. So to draw this, and this is the reason why you have like these items here. We can grab these. How do we grab them? Basically from our data here. Because the data is a reference to where exactly, basically to this item here. And this reference gets the data set, whatever data set is intact or active at that moment. So let me just show you so you have an understanding of that. Console log, data, save that, refresh, and all right, interesting. We have a mistake here. Let's double check what's going on here. Unexpected semicolon on 95. Uh, all right, of course, this is not a problem not necessary, I guess. Save, refresh. There we are. So now we have this, we get this here, we can see here the data that we have, which is the data set of cards. All right, so what I want to do is here now I can go from data, and then from the data I'm going to say data sets index zero, because there's only one data set, and then here now I want to grab the level. Put the level in there, save, refresh. As you can see here, if I change this, do we see it? It doesn't show yet, but in essence it is adjusting, but it doesn't matter. We're going to work on this. So now, what I want to do here is the following. I want to push it in here. So I'm going to say here ctx.begin path to say I want to draw lines, but these lines are independent of anything else. So once we have this, what we need to do here, and I realized because we had the array grabbing the item here, these three items, so we can loop through these. So we can use a for each for this. So I'm going to do here for each. So data dot data sets index zero dot um, is it data we can say data and hold on we can say you better our level so we got the level and then we can say here this is a level of shorthand and also an index and then what we have to do here as well another parentheses then we're going to here function error expression because we're going to create a callback functionality basically and then what I want to do here, oh, not even like that. I need to say a dot for each. So for every level item, which is basically shorthand now, like that. And for every one of them, we want to loop through each of these. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here, first of all, I want to create the begin path. Enter. Next, what I want to do here is maybe give the uh, line a certain width. So ctx dot stroke width and this stroke width equal let's say five pixels then what i'm going to do here is a ctx dot stroke style and this is a color so we say here equal and this could be our color so let's make this blue for now i'm going to later on we're going to grab the item here above so don't worry about that and then once we did that the another item is the moving tool so we're going to say a ctx dot move Two. And what we need is basically x and y value. So luckily we know the left value is the x value. And the reason why is of the chart area. That's this side. That's this side here. So then here the y value is basically the get pixel. So the dot get pixel for value. Make sure we spell that here. So what is the value is basically the level. So once we have this one. We have basically the starting point here, but I want to go all the way to the right side. So what I'm going to do here now is basically another one. CTX dot line, line two, and then we're going to see a right comma. I'm going to grab this. Then I'm going to say here, uh, the level is still same because we have a straight line, but all we have to do is we have to go from one side to the other. So this is all correct. Once we did that, CTX dot stroke to draw the item. Save this. Refresh. There we are. So now we loop through all of these. And that's all fine. If I change this one here, as you can see here, it's already working. But we have still two items I want to solve. First of all, the color. This blue color is hideous. So let's grab the color that we get here, which is the border or level borders. I guess that's maybe the border color or level color. Something like that should be about proper name. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm going to grab this. Say index. Save, refresh, and all right, interesting. We get a mistake here. Level borders is not defined. 
And why is this of course not defined? It makes sense because we are here in level and that's not allowed because our item had no shorthand. This is a level, was level had a shorthand, but this one doesn't have any shorthand. Grab this part here, put it in here, save this, refresh. Then you can see here, and I think maybe we can make the thickness of the line a bit more thicker. Uh, stroke width, I thought this should be already triggered for some reason. It's not, and of course it's not like this, it's line width if I'm not mistaken. There we are. Line width, nice thick border. Alright, so if I change this here, this works, but here's a mistake, or there's something here. So let me show you this. You see here 80, let's make something 19, make one of these 19, and then you get the uh, issue here. Um, well, it must be in this one here. Save, so it must be outside of the area, and then you can see here we get this horrible line outside of the chart area. What's the solution? Let me show you. Basically, what we need to filter out is, are we within the range of the value of top? If we are beyond top or it's bigger than top, show it. If it's lower than top, which means th this value goes above the area, then hide it. And I guess you could do, even do it for the bottom as well, if you would have a huge amount of range here. So what we're going to do here, you see this stroke here, we can do maybe an if statement that we only will do this, we only load this if, basically if we have this level, if level, um, oh sorry that's not what I wanted to do, if the level is basically this, so let's grab this, maybe I can say here a shorthand, let value of, let's say y position equals this, alright. And this y position is basically that. Maybe we can even put that in here as a shorthand. All right. Now I'm going to say here, if this will be uh, bigger than top, which is what we want. In that case, we want to show this. Else, hide it all. So then here, indentation. And here as well. Save. Ignore that one. Refresh. Now, as you can see here, now it's not showing. And here, this all works nicely. And that's basically how we can update it within the plugin by using these items here. Of course, there's another way with the ID, but I will make a separate video for that. that once I have that video, I will put that link will pop up here and you will see exactly how to do that way.